Hello from a chilly, drizzly Colorado. I'm going to make this one quick because it's raining. Uh, apparently, when Ukrainian President Zelensky met with Trump last month, they had a conversation about grand strategy and nuclear policy. I'll leave it to you to guess who instigated those topics. Uh, and Zelensky basically said that, like, look, if we can't get access to the NATO alliance, our only real option is to get nuclear weapons. We'd much prefer the NATO alliance. Uh <laughs> That's about the only options Ukraine has if the United States decides to step back from supporting Ukraine in these conflicts. Uh, there's no way that Ukraine can stand against Russia in a conventional fight. Uh, and uh, the Ukrainians definitely have the technical ec expertise to, in order to field a nuclear arsenal. I mean, there's really two things that you have to have. Number one, you have to have the nuclear fissile material itself, and they have a civilian power sector. So the only piece that they're really missing is an enrichment process, and that technology is 70, 80 years old. And there are a hell of a lot more PhDs in nuclear physics than there are in a place like North Korea or Iran, and they're struggling by just fine. Uh, second, you need the metallurgy to craft the nuclear device itself. And Ukraine was the heart of the old Soviet system for pretty much all weapon systems, most notably missiles, aeronautics, and milling. So if the uh, decision was made in Kiev to throw the switch and get started on this, I have no doubt that within six months they would at least have a device, probably a deliverable weapon. But I think the real issue here is not so much Ukraine. If the United States backs away from the NATO alliance in any meaningful way, or simply backs away from Ukraine so that the Russian assault is able to push right up against to the European border, it's not just Ukraine that's going to be going the nuclear route. There are a number of countries that fear that without the United States, they can't possibly stand on their own against the Russians, and they're probably right. Uh, the one to watch, or the one that would probably be able to pull this off fastest is Sweden. Again, uh, a deep expertise in military technology, milling, and their own civilian nuclear power plant. They could probably have a deliverable nuclear weapon within a month. Uh, Finland would be shortly thereafter, no more than two or three months for the same reasons. Uh, and then you've got the one that I really worry about the most, which is Germany. Uh, the Germans have many more nuclear facilities. They have much more engineering experience and a much larger economy to fund it all. Uh, and the reason that this would terrify me is the Germans have made bad strategic decisions for more or less the last century and a, a quarter straight. And the idea that they would feel spooked in getting to a nuke terrifies me, because every time the Germans get scared, uh, shit gets very real very fast. Uh, there's two other powers to consider. Uh, that would be Poland and Romania. Uh, Romania has the nuclear material. Poland has the machining capability. The two of them together could obviously do it together, or they could get partnered by another country like, say, Sweden or Europe's existing nuclear powers, France or the United Kingdom. So if this goes the wrong way in Ukraine, if the United States makes some poor strategic decisions, we're not simply going to be dealing with a resurgent Russia. We're going to be dealing with a half a dozen new nuclear powers in Europe. And if you think Europe is dicey and spicy now, just you wait.